here, in the center of Ashgabat, on the monument site to the great Turkmen poet Makdunguli Fragi, only a few decades ago, the dome of a temple was rising, a temple which would play a major role in the history of the spiritual development of human civilization. At the end of the 19th century, on the outskirts of the Russian Empire, Russian troops founded a new city on the site of an ancient Turkmen settlement, Ashgabat. This was the site of settlement for the followers of a new religion, the Baha'i Faith, which was born in Iran in 1844. Iranian Baha'is were leaving their homeland, where they were persecuted by the government for their beliefs. They traveled in groups on carts, taking Kushinskaya Road through Bajigaran to Ashgabat. The route which was suggested to them by Baha'u'llah, the head of the Baha'i Faith, for the first time in their heroic past, the migrants finally found refuge here in Ashgabat. Due to its strategic importance on the Iranian border, the Russian Tsarist government started massive construction here. The newcomers didn't have any difficulty finding well-paid jobs. Due to their virtuous lifestyle, they were readily accepted by the Russians and quickly prospered. A strong, independent, and unified religious community evolved, which became one of the most important contributors to the spiritual and social life of the city. Russian officers often talked to the Baha'is. They were well acquainted with the new religion, thanks to the numerous works by Orientalists. One of them was Officer Tumensky, who became a major researcher of the Baha'i faith. He found, translated into Russian, and, in 1899, published the Kitabi Akdas, Baha'u'llah's book which contains the main laws for the new era of humankind. At that time, this translation had an epochal significance. The Baha'is longed for a temple of their own, from the local newspaper. Yesterday, in the presence of the former chief of the Caspian Sea region, Lieutenant General Dean Ivanovich Sabotich, the ceremony of the laying of the foundation stone of the Babi Temple took place. The writings dedicated to this occasion were read in Russian and Persian, and the building's foundation was laid. The Lieutenant General greeted all who gathered there for that momentous occasion and wished for the successful completion of the construction project. The construction of the temple was based on a sound design and promised to be beautiful. The Baha'is wanted the temple to be as splendid and beautiful as the Pearl of Asia, the Taj Mahal in India. All matters associated with the temple's construction were in the capable hands of Haji Mirza Muhammad Taghi Afnan, a native of Yezd. This most faithful individual never spared himself, devoting his life to the cause of his faith. Back then, the representatives of many other faiths were watchful that the black-haired Iranian bricklayers wouldn't raise the dome above their own temples. There were other building constructions in progress on or near Voskresenskaya Square at that time, such as a Russian Orthodox cathedral, a Catholic church, and a German kiyahya. New administrative buildings, railroads, and bank offices adorned the city. But the indigenous population lived in the countryside, 
They only visited the city for trades at the then popular Tikinsky Bazaar. The Baha'i Temple construction was completed after 19 years. From the archive photos, it is evident that the building was adorned with fine Persian decorations inside and out. Eastern colors were present everywhere. The building plan represented a regular nonagon, a symbol of the Baha'i faith. A massive door with a portal and two minarets on the sides faced the holy city of Akka. The temple dome rose high above the city of Ashgabat, and a beautiful garden surrounded the building. The elders recall that peacocks walked along its well-groomed alleys. In the memory of Baha'u'llah, Iranian Baha'is brought with them the stem cuttings of black roses, which Baha'u'llah loved so much. These roses took root in the temple's flower gardens. High literacy level was achieved in the community. Two kindergartens were established. During the summertime, children were sent for vacations and camping to the picturesque and temperate locations in Bashkiria. A printing house was opened, which published school textbooks, Baha'i literature, and a magazine, The Sun of the East. By the 1930s, more than 4,000 Baha'is lived in Ashgabat, while only hundreds of the followers of the new religion were present in each of the various other countries. The greeting Allah Hopa, which means God is the most glorious, could always be heard in the streets of our city. The temple's beautiful hand-carved doors were open to everyone, regardless of skin color or religious denomination. Because, as Baha'u'llah said, we are the fruits of one tree. However, the militant atheism which spread through one-sixth of the world's land narrowly defined God's new revelation as yet another means of poisoning the minds of the working people. Per Soviet tradition, the temple was turned into a secular establishment. The National Museum of Art of the Soviet Socialist Republic of Turkmenistan used it for exhibitions. Churches and centers of other religions were also shut down in Ashgabat. Many believers were arrested and deported. The government began a program of expulsion of the Baha'is from the country. They were denied renewal of their registration. Almost all were imprisoned at some point in their lives. There were many prisoners, yet more and more new ones were arrested every night. Recently, a photo of those years was found. Former citizens of Ashgabat are pictured together in the Iranian city of Yazd. Here they are, our grandfathers and grandmothers, exiled and therefore never seen by us in our childhood. Despite the difficulties they experienced and whatever sufferings they endured both in Ashgabat and Iran, even in those conditions, they never lost the hope that one day the borders would open and the families would be reunited. But back then, the Baha'i community of Ashgabat was banned. There could be no underground activities because, according to Baha'i law, one cannot oppose the laws of the government. In 1963, TNT explosives were laid under the temple's foundation. Partially collapsed walls, remnants of a fierce earthquake, were finally destroyed.
Later, in different parts of the planet, one on each continent, Baha'i temples would be built, each bearing the same defining features, nine entrances and three architectural layers symbolizing the Baha'i administrative order, yet at the same time embodying the local culture and traditions. Nowadays, they are frequently referred to as the temples for all religions, the houses of worship of God, the centers through which the unification of the entire human race takes place worldwide. Such is the story of the Baha'i community of Ashgabat, established during the life of Baha'u'llah, the first Baha'i community outside of Iran, where the most important stages of the development of a new world religion took place. The community of Ashgabat became not only the most important milestone in the development of the international community of the young religion, but also served as a prototype for Baha'i communities throughout the world. The Turkmen community, the first among the Soviet republics, acquired official recognition and a legal status during the years of perestroika.